Um, this fridge, it says Telefunken. It's got uh, two doors on the top and there's two doors at the bottom and inside the fridge, let me just shine the light here it's got a little drain down there that you can see and there's an internal cold plate there and on the freezer side there is uh, little freezing shelves there's a little cover over the tubes there now this fridge came to us and there was no gas in the system it was completely empty and I removed the suction from the compressor and I removed the, it's got two capillaries and I put a gauge on the capillaries and I pumped up some pressure into it and right in the top corner there the gas is blowing out there so there's a massive big leak inside the internal cold plate now you'll never reach this cold plate to fix it uh, but the client loves this fridge and they want me to repair it and I'll show you how I repair these fridges this is the back of the fridge and it's made out of a like a plastic cover which I just cut with a knife and I remove the cover and I've dug out a little hole here where we can see the tube that goes into the freezer and there's a second one but I'll dig it a little bit further on and on the inside in the deep freeze section I've taken there was a little cover here there's the little cover which I've taken off and there's two tubes going in there so obviously from if I dig a little deeper in the back there I'll find the origin of the two tubes and there's a little cover there I'll take that cover off so there's two tubes there so and inside here I'll put an internal cold plate so I'm just going to dig out a little bit further in the back there and reach those two tubes what I found is there's one of the two tubes that comes out there. I've cut it off there. This one disappears up there. And this tube runs all the way through linking the two freezer sides. This is copper. And this one I've cut off. It's aluminium. So there must be some sort of aluminium to copper joint here somewhere. But my intention is to dig a hole up to the top. I'll run a tube to the cold plate it's nice that these two freezers are linked and I'll link it up to the cold plate that I'm going to fit in there what I've done now is I've that little piece of aluminium that was joined onto the copper there I've cut that off and I've cleaned the copper and I've put a capillary which I stuck about an inch into that and I've welded that on there now so now we're going to start by freezing this side it's going to go back to the freezer on the other side and this one i will run up to the cold plate which i'm going to fit later on and um, so far everything looks good what i've done on the other side the little quarter inch pipe that comes out i've welded a longer piece of quarter inch on and i've just connected it to a a bottle so we blow some pressure through and we just make sure it comes out the open end of the capillary blowing through nicely so there's no blockages and there's no leaks there so that's the freezer part done now I'll do the top bit for cold plate um, what I've done now with the high side which is these tubes here I've connected a pipe onto a gauge and I've put a service valve on there and just with a, a old compressor I pumped some pressure in there and um, it shows there uh, but between 50 and 150 is 100 pounds PSI so I'll just leave it like that for an hour if it drops we look for another second leak on the system um, if it doesn't drop then I know the high side's okay Within a short period the pressure started dropping 
So I was just looking at my welds first and I found a small little leak there. So now this time I've pumped it up between 300 and 350 PSI. There's the other valve so I'm going to leave it for an hour or so uh, just to make sure there's no leak in the internal condensers. It's about two hours later. Um, there's the two pipes on the condenser the gauge didn't drop at all so I just want to double check my um, capillary my I did a weld there and um, this weld here so what I've done is I put a service valve on it and I've pumped this one up to it's almost at 250 about 225 and I'm going to leave it for about two hours and just see if this leaks so I've just got it straight onto the capillary there onto the gauge just to make sure there's no leaks before we carry on it's about two and a half hours later now uh, pressure is still exactly where I left it so I can safely say that internal freezer is not leaking and the internal condenser is not leaking so now I'll take it off the workbench and uh, fit the cold plate from the inside on the top This is the cold plate that I'm going to put in here. It's made out of aluminium. The one side was painted and the back wasn't. But I just took it outside and with a spray can I just painted a little bit of paint on it. It will stop the corrosion from forming. And then I'm going to make a hole in the top here and put the pipes through to the back. I've cut a little slot into the fridge here. I just took a drill bit and moved it up and down. Um, I did that the length of this shoulder of the cold plate, which I'm going to stick through there, but I'll make a hole behind the fridge in the back so the pipes can go out for now. There, I've mounted the cold plate now, put four self-tapping screws in. These two screws are made of bracket that mounts the thermostat bulb. Here's the thermostat, but I'm going to put a little box here with a knob for them to adjust the temperature. And I'll take a wire straight through the back and break the compressor on this. But this is the cold plate mounted. And behind the fridge... Oops. This is behind the fridge where I cut the slot. There's the cold plate pipe coming out, so this I'm going to link down later on and connect some pipes up. I've mounted the thermostat cover. This is an old cover that I took from a fridge that I threw away. Thermostat is mounted inside, the knob can turn. Here's the thermostat bulb, it just runs straight into the cold plate. Measures the temperature there and behind the fridge. I've just made a hole, this is where the wire comes out. And this will switch the compressor on and off. This is behind the fridge. I've uh, welded one pipe onto the pipe coming from the cold plate, this pipe here. Which I'll make shorter and I'll join on here. And this one is your suction back down to the compressor. But this is what it looks like so far. This is the wire from the thermostat. I made a little hole that comes through. This is the back of the fridge now. I've uh, put the pipes in where I'm going to run it in this little slot here. And then the suction, I've made a little hole, comes out at the bottom. And the capillary, I've winded it around this suction here uh, for a very good reason. And there's the pipes inside there. What I've done on the top here, I've put a little piece of styrofoam with some silicon and glued it in there because what I'm going to do now is lie the fridge on its face and fill all this up with the polyfoam uh, to insulate and seal it. And on the inside, right on the top of the culprit, you can actually see the little piece of styrofoam that I've put in with silicon. But I'll put some more silicon on from the front just to make it look nice and seal it there. I'm halfway through the process of insulating it. This top bit is done. What I do is I take styrofoam and I break it in little blocks to fill up most of the spaces and then I pour the foam in between. This has still got a few gaps that I've got to do. 
but this small bit I put the, the, the cover that I took off there put on there and that slot I still have to close up but this is just how I do it so you save on a bit of foam by putting the styrofoam pieces in here the foam I get is in two bottles A and B you mix it 50-50 and I put a plastic on top and a glass to give a flat surface on top the back cover is on now there's the top of it and I used a little bit of duct tape to tape the back piece in now I can install the compressor there's my compressor in the box ready to go in the compressor is in and it's running there's the new suction comes from the hole we made from the inside the old suction was there but it's chopped off I'm using the existing high side this is the capillary and what I've done with this wire that comes from the top I've connected it into connect connecting block there but this compressor runs through this wire on the thermostat it's got nothing to do with the electronics and there's the solenoid wires there was a little solenoid valve there's a solenoid valve with the two capillaries I've just disconnected the two wires I've just tied them up with a zip tie so they don't make a short and now we'll run it for a while and when I'm happy this is the defrost tray which I'll just glue onto the top of the compressor but I'll do that later on first we get the temperatures right and make sure that the cold plate defrosts when it cycles okay I've put the compressor in it's got a right amount of gas in it I've pinched this off, I've closed this off so the system is all sealed with gas inside there's the little pencil dryer which I connected onto the existing condenser there's the capillary this is the wire that goes up to the internal thermostat and this is what the back of the fridge will look like I've got some duct tape on it but just behind the fridge nobody will notice this on the top here is the PC board that controls or used to control the functions it still controls the display come to the front this is this display um, you can still adjust things on the display but this is the cold plate that I fitted it's running it's getting cold now and the thermostats there it's got two light switches that work the light. I ran it down to zero degrees Celsius just now, but now it's all together. So I'll just see how it runs and how it cycles. But this is how I convert these fridges once they develop the internal gas leak.